What's up guys, welcome to the circus, late night tip. All right, so I've got something that I came across uh, on social media and then picked up a news story about it, and it involves the teachers. And let me preface this by saying I love teachers. We need teachers. Teachers are a must, and good teachers are beautiful people. That being said, this channel has gone over the facts regarding the CV. And we know exactly how much danger teachers are in when they're going to school, even in the most dangerous of times, according to the CV populace. There's literally no scientific reasoning for having these kids at home. They need to be into school. They need to socialize. They need to learn the life lessons that come with being in school. And what we've come to is an imposition where teachers and their unions, which have grown very powerful and influential, they don't want to go back to work. They say that it's based on science, but as we've gone through on this channel many times, not a lot of science. As a matter of fact, if we are going to say that we put children first, then we absolutely would open all of our schools up immediately because the science is obvious that it is way more negative on children to have them not in school for other ancillary reasons than it is over the CV, which just statistically doesn't affect them the way that it affects the rest of the world. And I don't want to retread all the science behind that. We've gone over the white paper. You can go to my CV playlist and you can look it up. The best video I made on it was one called Scott Atlas Rises from the Ashes of Academia to Speak the Truth About Children in the CV. <clears throat> and that was before Scott Atlas got picked up by the Trump team. But he was speaking the truth right at the beginning. And uh, he cites all the scientific articles and he shows exactly why children should be back in school. And... It's frustrating because we knew children should be back in school back during the Trump presidency. And we also knew that they were going to start cleaning this CV mess up quickly after Biden took the presidency. And that's exactly what they're doing. But just the same, if you care about children, then they need to go back to school. Do we put children first or not? So in this vein, I ran across some of the most disgusting information I've come across on the Internet in a long time. It, it made me feel nauseous, honestly. I don't have children of my own, but if my children were in this school district, I would be infuriated. Let's get into it. School board mocked parents before realizing their online meeting was public. Hmm. School board members in Oakley, California vented about parents in a Zoom meeting thinking their session was private. Unfortunately for them, it was actually open to the public. After they complained about dissatisfied parents who hid behind their screens, one member asked, are we alone? When someone answered yeah, she pretended she was sassing a parent. Quote, bitch, if you're gonna call me out, I'm gonna fuck you up. Hearty laughter ensued. Now, I apologize for the profanity, and I hope that you're not listening to my video around children. Normally, I'd give a warning about that beforehand, but I just don't expect teachers to be speaking this way. So I'm reading it. It's like uh, Anchorman. <laughs> I'm reading it. I don't want to say it, but I'm reading it. There's nothing I can do about it. So there's going to be further profanity because we're going to listen to this conversation. Just to encourage you. Yeah. People, it's easy to hide behind a screen and put it oh, on. Yeah. You know? But when you're face to face with people, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. You know? Well, what's funny is that uh, uh, she's friends with uh, who I just went to Idol Star, and it, it, it was posted on social media. Someone else posted it. It's like whatever. I wasn't doing anything bad. I could. I really. I honestly don't care about that part. But you know what? Are we alone? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bitch, if you're gonna call me out, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> Sorry, that's just me. <laughs> you know, they forget that there's real people on the other side of those those letters that they're writing. Yes. No, I think you guys have forgotten that there's real people and real children that are suffering. 
build community members. We have kids or have known kids that have gone to these schools. Right. We have an invested interest in this process, and they don't know what we right. do behind the scenes. And it's really unfortunate exactly. that they, they want to pick on us because right. they want their babysitters back. They want to pick on us because they want their babysitters back. Imagine being so narcissistic and disconnected from reality that you think the only reason parents are contacting you, asking you to reopen schools, is because they want their babysitters back. Imagine being that vapid of a person. Is there some of that? Yeah, of course there is. You're a teacher. You're supposed to want to educate children. You're supposed to work with these families that you're talking about right now. What has happened? Right. Right. I agree. And it's funny. It's just, it, I just need to get. I agree. Let's continue on. <clears throat> we already heard that. Another trustee said to more laughter, quote, my brother had a delivery service for medical marijuana and his clientele were parents of kids at school. See tweet below. Wow. So your brother released medical information about your student's parents to you. And then you release that personal information about those parents out to your coworkers. That's disgusting. When someone finally messaged them that their bitch session wasn't actually a private affair, the first words spoken were, uh-oh. We have the meeting open to the public right now, one of the trustees said. Nuh-uh, Brizendine said, looking stunned, who resigned from her post the next day. Let's listen to when they realized. Uh-oh. Laura Lanier, just FYI, you guys have the meeting. Oh, we have the meeting open to the public right now. Nuh-uh. No. -uh. That's what Lori just said. <laughs> Great. Uh-oh. Something tells me that these aren't the smartest teachers in the world that you would want ch teaching your children anyway. What a bunch of morons. Freaking idiots. Before she realized the public was listening in, school board president. That's the school board president! Criticize parents who continue to be frustrated by the district's CV-related school closures. They want to pick on us because uh, they want their babysitters back. We already played that. And they don't know what we right. do behind the scenes. And it's really unfortunate exactly. that they, they want to pick on us because right. they want their babysitters back. Right. 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 Right, right, yeah, right. No, not right. Incorrect. They're worried about their children. Their children are failing with distance learning. 70, 80, 90% of children last year who put on distance learning were failing. The idea that you can't comprehend that they're worried about their children and you just think that they want a babysitter back. You're so jaded that you think that as you sit at home and still get paid to not go and do your job. My brother had a delivery service for medical marijuana. Clientele where parents with their kids in school. <laughs> you know, medicinal marijuana isn't a joke. I've known guys like I know guys that started out trying to get their PTSD handled at the VA, and they ended up on thousands of med. I mean, just you wouldn't believe it. Everything from Senequine to Seroquel to Trazodone and Lithium. They would put you on this blood pressure medicine, mini press, because they said, oh, it will help you stop having nightmares. They didn't tell you you would never dream again. Klonopin, Xanax, opioid addiction. I have seen so many veterans get off all of those all at once using a little medicinal marijuana. And those people receiving that relief are having their private medical information given to a teacher who teaches their students 
so that he can make judgments about them, right? And then he takes that information his brother illegally gave him, and he spreads it to the other teachers because they see it as besmirching those parents. They don't know anything about those parents. And they have a good hearty laugh at them. It's disgusting. What school board officials thought was a private chat also included Superintendent Greg, Greg Hetrick trying to sell the board on new technology that aims to limit public comment by cutting off parents mid-sentence. It cuts them off mid-sentence and it's done, he said. And isn't that interesting because we were just talking about the other day how the White House petitioning site has been taken down and how they don't put comments on the White House YouTube channel anymore. It's starting to sound like in lots of different separate areas we're seeing our ability to let our voices be heard curtailed, even at this low level, at a school board meeting. I was... I was talking to um, one of my buddies, he's the superintendent in Benicia, and we're talking about public comment, and they just recently switched, so their tech department set it up to where uh, people that want to submit a public comment call in and have to leave a message, and, so, and the message will cut you off at three minutes. Yeah. And it's, so it's like, hi, my name is Greg Hetrick. I, I live at you know, 2221 Delta Road, Knights in California. And I wish to speak on blah, 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 blah. And they say it, and da, 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 da. And if, if three minutes comes, it just cuts them off mid-sentence, and you're done. And it's like, and then that gets, uh, that gets saved, and they, they send it in. I love that. Right? Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing these pe parents complain about their children not being educated. <sighs> I, like, I, was just, I think that's a good idea. When I was president, great. We need that. I was, I was we need that. The superintendent, of course, then issued an apology. I really, I honestly don't care about that. In what was believed to be a closed session. Are we alone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to call me out, I'm going to you up. <laughs> Oakley Union Elementary School Board members are sounding off, not knowing parents were listening and even recording the unfiltered conversation. They want to pick on us because right. they want their babysitters back. Right. 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 And unhinged comments towards parents who want to reopen school right. campuses. When well, you got your kids at home. The sentiments are not sitting well among parents. I feel that that was a slap in the face to not only PTA members, not only to teachers, by calling them babysitters. Greg Hetrick, the superintendent, says in a statement to KCRA, these comments are not typical, and more importantly, they are not what the community should expect from our school district. Shame on you. Every single one of those people should lose their job. And that guy's brother should be investigated for giving out private medical information saying those things about people. Shame on you for um, belittling us. That's how most parents that I know feel right now. It's a slap in the face. Hedrick adds he will hold himself accountable, stating, I will not make excuses for what happened or why it happened. To see people in, in local government uh, in charge of that, really just... What he's saying, see, that's the thing. That, that I don't know, I don't have a name for it, but it's kind of like a humble brag. What he did there was he kind of alluded to the fact that there are excuses because he said I'm not going to make excuses kind of like saying I'm not going to bring up the obvious reasons why that happened because I'm just going to step back and take responsibility there are no excuses that you could bring up you're saying I won't make excuses but guess what buddy there are none so shut up parents is um Horrifying. Ernesto Falcone represents families who want school campuses to reopen safely. He says Oakley, as well as other school districts, should follow CDC guidelines to welcome students back to the classroom. Which are straightforward um, and, and reverse course. You know, maybe they keep their jobs, but that, that's up to the local community. And as this petition gains more traction, which demands that the board trustees resign, Zambrana says what may help build trust is transparency. Just more more communication, 
Let us know what's happening. We want communication. They're not going to communicate with you because they don't want to work, okay? They're trying their best to avoid communicating with you. I need you guys to understand that. They're avoiding it on purpose. You have to go down there and you have to talk to them. The CDC guidelines are clear that children should be back at school. If you live in a place where your children are still doing hybrid learning, it must change. The children are suffering under hybrid learning. We have the meeting open to the public right now. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. K received. KCRA 3 News. Now, KCRA 3 also reached out to the board members through email. They have not yet responded. I bet they haven't. So they say that he issued an apology. I guess he did. He said he wasn't going to make excuses. I don't think he said I'm sorry, did he? I don't know. And this isn't a localized thing. I just pulled this up real quick. Philly teachers protest near Mayor Kenny's home over school districts return to in-school learning. Even though the CDC guidelines say we should be taking kids back to school, no, they're protesting. Why? Because they have power through union. The same reason it's hard to fire a teacher. Teachers rally to protest reopening schools. You know, it's, 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 it's strange to me. Can I ask a question? You guys leave this comment down below, but... When a teacher does this, what do they think about the restaurant workers, the people who stock shelves in grocery stores, the people who drive taxis, the people who uh, work in pharmacies, and the, the people who've had to work through this entire thing, and they were not able to do this? What, what do they think makes them special? When the science comes out and the science says it's time to go back to the classroom, what about our current group of teachers is making them not want to go back, even though the science says they should? Why, why don't they want to? What's the answer to that? It's clear that they're fighting it every step of the way. But why? The science excuse is gone. I got more content to come, guys. Hopefully it won't be content that disgusts me because this, honestly, this video was hard for me to get through. It's nauseating to see fellow human beings act this way. These people are supposed to want the best for the children in America. The children in America have been suffering under suicide, unreported child abuse, unreported sicknesses. They have been lost and they are listless. They don't have guidance and they don't have structure. Online courses only works for a small subset of highly responsible children. Our children are suffering. And America has a crappy history of taking care of children. And our question we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to continue on that mantle? You know, when people write in books about 100 years ago when we were sending children into the coal mines and getting black lung, in 100 years from now, are they going to talk about how the children were the last people we considered when we started coming out of this? What is going to be our legacy? And what does it tell a child that wants to go back to school when he or she sees their teacher protesting, holding a sign, I can't teach from the grave, as if that young child is going to make her sick and kill her, even though she's in her 30s and children have a very low possibility of even spreading it. I can't teach from the grave. Sure be nice if a, if a guy who stocks shelves at, at the grocery store could go stand out there and hold that sign and still be getting paid. All right, guys.